inventor, weirdly. Um, and uh, I've invented this product and material technology called Sugru. Thank you to everybody who's come up to me today to, to tell me about their fixes and stuff. Um, but for those of you who haven't used it or don't know what it is, it's basically a moldable glue that uh, bonds to pretty much anything and makes it easy to fix things and mend things. Um, you basically mold it and shape it, and then overnight it turns into a really nice durable silicone rubber. Um, I invented it to get a new generation fixing again, um, and in a proud way. Um, if you look at their faces, they're feeling pretty chuffed at themselves, um, and that's what Suguru is all about. It's not about that kind of fixing when you're a kid and you're embarrassed about cell tape on your glasses. It's about um, being proud to be somebody who fixes stuff and makes things and, and, and gets hands on. Um, it's been a labor of love. I've been working on it for 14 years now, maybe going on 15. Um, but it's definitely gaining uh, momentum now. There's more than 2 million people around the world in 170 countries. Um, using Sugru to fix all sorts of stuff, and as a community, we've fixed more than 10 million things, which I'm pretty proud of because that's a lot of stuff not gone into landfill, and a lot of stuff that's still bringing joy and, and utility to people in, in their lives. Um, one of my favorite books is a, a, a book called Material World by a photographer called Peter Menzel, who traveled the world in the 1990s, nice outfits, um, basically documenting families with their stuff. Um, so all their stuff is laid out in front of their house. And to me, there's something really beautiful about these portraits because um, it just sort of, it kind of exposes our, our lives and highlights our difference and how different we all are and how we create, um, I guess, personal worlds um, around ourselves with the stuff that we choose to live with um, and the ch stuff that we choose to keep and, and to cherish. Um, and I guess, like, I, there's something really sort of intimate here and um, celebrating, uh, I suppose, a relationship with stuff that has richness and has joy and has meaning. Um, and I guess I, I, I just really like that. Um, whereas if we think about our relationship with stuff on the, on the scale of the planet, it's actually, rather than being something really special, it's something that is causing the biggest problem of our time, which is climate change. Um, how we want more and more stuff, how we make the stuff that we want, and how we behave with it once we have it. Um, there's just far too much waste in the world, and it is creating massive problems. I'm not going to go into all the statistics. You know a lot of this stuff. It's a self-evident problem, and it is absolutely massive. It's polluting our water, our air, destroying ecosystems. And like I said, you know, it is a massive contributor to climate change. Not to be depressing about it. <laughs> um, you'd think, OK, are we living in uh, you know, this sort of welcome to hell thing or whatever? Are we living in really dark times? Um, but actually, if you look at the statistics, by most measures, um, we're actually living in the best times ever. Like, just since 1990, like, since I went to secondary school, like, when I was 12 or whatever, like, we've halved the numbers on most important measures of, of quality of life, um, you know, and cut poverty levels. People, the, the levels of people living in poverty today are a third across the world of what they were in the 1990. And to me, I'm an optimist, and to me, when I look at something like this, I think, you know, climate change, yes, it is an absolutely massive problem, but human ingenuity is an amazing thing, and collaboration and cooperation is an amazing force, and I think that we can do it. Fixing things is only one tiny part of the puzzle, um, but that's our little part. And what we try to do is, um, we believe that fixing is never something that people are gonna do by finger-wagging or telling them they should do it. It's all about inspiration. We need to um, unlock people's imagination and help show them how fun and satisfying it is. Um, and so that's what we try to do at Sugru. And we do that mainly through social media and how we, how we get our product out there. 
Um, and a massive part of that is the community of people that use Zugru and nurturing them and encouraging them to inspire their friends and family to, and people on the internet to, to fix things and have a go at fixing things as well. So um, it's either about getting them to share their fixes or it's about us creating content around Zugru and using YouTube and using Facebook and so on to, to encourage people to have a go and show them how fun it is. Um, so it all sounds like it makes a lot of sense, right? Um, but it definitely didn't start out like this. Um, like Tara earlier, I grew up on a farm, and um, that's what I blame uh, for, for turning me into a, an inventor and an entrepreneur. Because when something breaks on a farm, you know, you don't go to the shops and get a new one. You find a way to, to fix it, and you get the welder out. Um, I never thought that I would be an inventor. Science uh, was my uh, you know, least favorite subject in school, and the second least favorite was business studies, but here I am. Um, I've invented a material technology that is enabling all of this somehow, and uh, I run a business that employs 70 people, and we have a factory and sell a lot of stuff. It's quite weird. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it definitely wasn't a journey where um, it may, you know, it was a, it definitely wasn't a predictable journey. Um, I th thought I'd be a product designer. I went to London and had all my hopes and invested all my, my hopes and dreams into becoming a great product designer until I realized that actually that would be contributing to something awful. And like, do we really need more chairs, lamps, phones? Um, what was the point? And I had this sort of existential crisis. <laughs> in, a, in a city far from home, and uh, anyway, had a pretty hard time at college until I uh, did an experiment that resulted in the basis and the idea for Sugru, and that was where everything changed for me, and I, 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 I got this quite weird idea of a, a material, a kind of a space-age rubber, that what if anyone could fix and mend and, and manipulate stuff, and they thought that that was a fun and cool thing to do. It was, a, it was a weird idea, but I got obsessed by it, and I filled up notebooks full of drawings like this that were basically um, imagining this material that didn't, didn't actually exist yet. Um, and somehow I, I found the... The, the courage, and, and I think I was just so obsessed and so believing in my idea. Um, I managed to get a grant, and I managed to hook up with some scientists who taught me the basics of the chemistry that I needed to know. I spent about four years mixing little chewing gums like this in a makeshift lab. Um, but I couldn't... Oh, sorry, I should go back one. <laughs> it was much easier to convince myself than it was to convince investors, and you know, it was heartening to hear the challenges that... Uh, so many people have with raising investment, but um, I, I definitely found it the hardest thing that I had to do. Um, and in 2008, um, I'd spent four years or something of, you know, all my hopes and dreams of whatever developing this um, material. It was nearly there. Um, and then the financial crash happened, and it was just, um, well, a very low moment. And um, I didn't know if it, would, if it would happen at all, until a friend said this to me, and it just changed my whole mindset. I'd always thought of Sugru as something that needed to be big, it needed to be something in the shops, you know, I wanted it to be in the supermarket, I wanted everyone to be able to buy it, whatever. Um, and when she said to me to start small and make it good, it was about saying, actually, no, let's just, let's just get it out there and see what happens. Um, and so that's what we did. We went to Electric Picnic and started demoing it. Um, logical for like a new glue product, right? Um, uh, roped in friends and family, you know, um, designed our own packing machines, um, and uh, came up with a brand name, came up with a website, uh, designed some cool packaging, and basically just thought about it in a way that was getting us excited and not necessarily thinking about the rules of business or whatever. Um, we launched it online, and it worked. Um, we set up our own website with a thousand packs, and they sold out in six hours, uh, which was in 2010. That was like a few days after we had shipped the packs. We started hearing back from our users, and they started sharing their stories, and it has never stopped since, basically. Um, and you should just have a look around on our website or on Facebook. There are thousands and thousands of enthusiastic stories from people all over the world, and it really, really is inspiring. 
This is from the head of operations in NASA who uses it with his team to encourage resourcefulness and, and, um, and sustainability. Uh, yeah, we even have wrestlers. And um, this is actually an Irish one, uh, a chicken that lost their leg to a fox and got a new one uh, that has a better suit. <laughs> So thanks to this amazing community, we've been able to build the business and convince retailers to take it on, and we're growing steadily all the time, and we're in some really big, big retailers like Target in the US now. And we've continued to invest in the science, and we'll be launching a Sugru that's safe enough to, to sell for kids um, in September, which I'm super excited about, because kids are so enthusiastic, they're natural creators, they're natural fixers, and we need to nurture that and keep that going. Um, as they grow up. Um, so thanks for listening.